So hi again, thank you guys so much for joining me for the Let's Make a Map QGIS workshop here at Florida State University. Florida State University. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let me get my turn off my camera and share my screen. Okay. So into the chat, I did post our, again, our lesson plan for kind of what we're going to be working through today. Um, if you have not downloaded QGIS yet, uh, it's okay. Um, it may take, you may not be able to follow along as we do it, but that's why I also have this document for you. That way you can do it on your own if this is of interest to you. I find that one of the best ways to work through QGIS, especially when you may be learning it, um, uh, learning how to use spatial data, how to use the GIS software, is to kind of have a purpose. So I've crafted this fake scenario for us um, that we are going to use. It's what we're pretending we are part of a group that's dedicated to Florida outdoor activities, and we were asked to make a map um, that would help people identify many of the trails located within the Wakiowa Spring State Park. If I mispronounce that, I am very sorry. I am not a native Floridian, so excuse me. In here, in, in our document, I'll move it over to the screen right here. Um, you will see there is instructions for downloading all of our data that we are using. It is located all in our Let's Make a Map data folder. So please download each one of these and then it, these will download as a zip file. You will have to unzip them. I do suggest anytime you are starting a new project or if you are working, know you're going to be working with a certain set of data a long time or for multiple projects, make sure you save it in a place that you can easily remember where it is and make sure it is appropriately labeled. So getting started, we have our QGIS. We've opened QGIS. We're going to go ahead and we are going to start a new project. So go ahead and click on st start a new project. And for a reminder who and a reminder for anyone who may not have attended the previous workshop, the intro to QGIS, um, how we can load our data is very simple. So I like to call I like to call these pieces a construction paper, um, but it's our when it's our cue for opening our data sources and we are loading all vector data today. So we can use, we can stay on the the automatic window that it opens to um, tab uh, vector data set. And we can use our three dots to find where we have saved our information um, here on the computer. So let me back it out to my QGIS workshop folder. I know we need our state park boundaries. Okay, and make sure you are choosing the SHP file that stands for shape file. That will be what we work with every what we work with today. Add that, then I am going to add our state parks points of interest. Oh, I got to go out one more. Oh, no. I Point, oh, okay, I just, there we go. I just wasn't reading my screen properly. We added our points of interest. Now we are going to also add in our state park boundaries. Oh, I already added state park boundaries, trails, excuse me, park trails. That's the one I wanted to add. I had added that one earlier. And then finally, we are also going to add our Florida County boundaries. Uh, I want Florida County boundaries. And, oh wait, hold on, I'm gonna double check. I think I might've clicked on the wrong one. There we go, that's the one I want, okay. All right, so what you're gonna see when you go to add the Florida County Boundaries file is this window that pops up. What this is simply stating is the rest of the files that we have added are drawn in one projection system. The file that we are trying to add is drawn in a different projection system. So think about the world, we're trying to take a 3D world and make it on a 
project it on a two dimensional screen. That means some things are going to be distorted. It may be the distance between objects. It may be the slightly change of direction of objects, any of that. But what's great about GIS software is we can kind of convert one projection to another um, ex when especially when they are not far off and we are using similar data sets. Additionally, if you want to learn so we can just simply click OK and it will change that county boundaries uh, file to match our other data sets. And then you can go ahead and close that window. If you are interested in learning more about different types of projections, I, ha I do have some links in that document that kind of explain more about projection and how coordinate systems work. Now, over here, we see that our all of our layers have been added. They're in our little layers pane over here. But you notice we can't see everything. So what we need to do is make sure our drawing order makes sense and that it is drawn in a way that allows us to see the most detail possible. So it is good, good practice um, that in general, you're going to have your polygons, which is what the county boundaries is. OK, a polygon is kind of like an enclosed shape are usually listed at the bottom of our list. So you can just click and drag it down. Then we have a Florida, we have our Florida State Parks Trail. Usually lines go ab above our polygon layers and then points usually at the top. Now the order may change depending on what you're trying to show um, or highlight on your map or what you want to see best. But now what we can see is we have our state park boundaries, we have our trails, we have points of interest. And if I want to zoom in, I'm going to zoom in a little bit real quick just to show you. So that lighter brown shade right now, those are our state park boundaries so we can see it. Um, it's just when we are zoomed so far out, they're a little harder to see. So we will be zooming in when we start working with our specific state park. Okay, and let me just open up the chat just that way I can make sure I don't miss anything in case anybody put something in. So first things first is when we're looking at our map, especially when we zoomed in, these two colors, they're really close together, okay? The shades are so close that it makes it hard to tell when we're zoomed a little further out. So what we're going to do is we're going to first change some symbology to, that makes sense for us and what we're trying to do. So go ahead and click on the Florida counties layer, right click, add proper and go to properties. And it probably opened up on the symbology tab for you. If it didn't, go ahead and choose symbology off, um, off to the side. And we are going to do a very simple coloring for our background because the county areas are not the main focus of the map. So what we do is we click on our simple fill <clears throat> and um, our simple fill will, oh, sorry, so our single symbol, let me go back one. Sorry, I clicked, I clicked before I, I meant to, okay? So we have options where we can choose down here our what what we would like what's going on but if we go ahead and we click on simple fill and the, where it says sim, symbol layer type we're going to do um outline simple line okay uh this will make the basically make the inside of our shape uh, transparent while just giving us a simple black line around our object. So if you go ahead and click apply, that should change the color. So now it's white. You can start seeing patches of brown popping up behind our dots um, where our points of interest in the state parks are. So that is the very simple way of quickly changing our symbology. So we're, we're going to go ahead and we're going to play with some of our symbology again with our um, our point points of interest. So again, it's just a right click and properties. 
And this time, instead of doing just the same symbol for everything, we're going, we're going to have some fun with it. So go ahead and choose categorized. And then what we need to do is we need to tell tell the system what type of category we want. So let me go ahead and open something up real fast. So for any of you who were not at the previous workshop, we're going to take a look at our attribute table. This attribute table is basically giving us ideas about what's going on. Um, it, it, the attribute table describes the data. Excuse me. So we have like um, a POI name. So this is the like points of interest type of name. Um, we have a POI class, which is a classification. Um, and then we have a site name. So the site name would be the parks that we're working in. So these would be the main uh, um, categories that we would consider using when we were classifying. So I'm going to go ahead and get back to our symbology layer and our category. So let's go ahead and let's categorize our um, points of interest by class. So what type they are. And go ahead and have your color ramp set to random colors. Now, if we were using something that was like on a grade scale, for example, our values could somehow be described from one to four, for example, using something like a, a shade scale would be more appropriate. But because the colors don't matter, because um, the points of interest are, are kind of random, a random color scale is just fine. So what we're going to do is we come down here and we click classify. Now, what that has done is it has taken every different type of point of interest and given it its own color. So if you click apply and move this kind of out of the way, don't exit out because we're going to keep using it. Now we have a lot more colored dots. We have a lot more going on. Um, <clears throat> but what is difficult is trying to tell the difference between all of them. Some of the colors start to look a look the same. Um, there are a lot of examples like a lot of camping, a lot of fishing, a lot of hiking. So a general rule of thumb is don't clutter your map with a lot of unnecessary information. It, it distracts the reader. It makes it hard to see the actual point that you're trying to talk about. And um, <clears throat> We need to think about the mission of our map, which is highlighting the trails that people can use. So with that in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to limit what type of symbols are used without deleting any of the data um, because we can turn things back on as we kind of play with our map. So in our column, um, we can go ahead and Let's see, where's my um, diselect things? Oops, diselect things that we may not need. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Anything that is not a trail is essentially what we are doing. So, like, let's keep biking trail. We'll, um, and I know it's kind of annoying to do the clicks, but right now that's the best way for us to kind of do it. So I'm just unchecking everything that, oop, leave that one. That one's a trail. That one's also a trail. So just lots of clicks, some more trails, historic site. There we go. So I'm just unchecking these. And you will see what I mean is we still have all this information available to us later if we decide we need to add them back onto our map. So if you give me a moment, I am just unchecking. Okay, something I do, oh, I'm going to leave trailhead on there. Um, something I do want to point out is down here, there is all other. So anything that we may add to the map later, 
that would be classified as a point of interest would appear here. We're not going to do that. So it, we can go ahead and remove that. So if you highlight that one and use a little minus sign down here, it will delete that one entry. Now go ahead and click apply again. And I'm gonna move this out of the way. We now have a lot less dots. And if I expand, oh, if I expand our list over here, it is a lot more, um, it's very easy to quickly see what we're looking at, okay? And we know that everything involving this is a trail. <clears throat> so, but what is still a problem is I still have to zoom way in to actually see where the trails are um, because the dots are still hiding it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to, again, work on this symbol. Okay, so we're in our symbol layer and we're cl click on the symbol and it's gonna open up a symbol setting layer. And we can go ahead and kind of play with this a little bit. So let's change, oh, apologies, apologies. I was going to have us change. I was starting with changing this when really I wanted to change our our park trail line. So I apologize. So park trails property symbology. I get going a little too fast and sometimes I start mixing us up. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and change the thickness of our line and let's make that a 0.4 thickness. Apply, apply. And now we're starting to see the lines up here. They're a little bit thicker. You can see them a little bit better. Um, uh, and this, essentially what I want you guys to learn from this is kind of how you can start playing with the symbologies to start seeing them a little bit better. Um, but what I would like to do is zoom in to this area, for example, and notice how it's kind of like overlapping. There's lots of different information. It starts to kind of blend in with our park boundaries. And let me zoom, oops, zoom back out so we can see our full <clears throat> um, information. Um, so, Keep that in mind as we're working through this, okay? What I want to do real fast is give you guys an idea about what a, how we are going to use the printable map tools. So if you come up to our toolbar and you're gonna choose the one that like has kind of the um, right angle ruler, I guess is what you could call it. And it should say new print layout when you hover over it. It's going to ask for a name. Uh, and um, this one is just kind of our practice one. So you can go ahead and put like Florida trail practice. My typing is not great today and I apologize for that. And it should open up this new window. Okay, it's a blank window. It doesn't show our map. That's because we need to tell it what elements we want. So this is where our sidebar over here becomes very important because this is where we choose what elements, excuse me, um, we want to add. So obviously we want to add a new map or our map. So you can kind of draw it. Now, something to keep in mind is you need to remember that this page that they're showing would be like the page that you print. So think about your borders and your capacity of the printer. You always want to make sure you leave a little bit of an edge. That way you don't cut off your map. Um, and so um, with our margins, so we have our map. Now we can use our little move icon to like move the map around. So say for example, you know, if you wanted to put it off to one side, that way you have a big white space area to work with. Um, Florida is a nice shape for that. Um, we're able to kind of work with it. <clears throat> Excuse me one moment, I need to take a sip of water.
All right. Um, additionally, if you, you you can use your mouse to kind of scroll in or to kind of zoom in and out of our map. Um, when you zoom too far in, it's obviously going to kind of move and mess with it a little bit. So those are just some things to remember and be kind of careful of as you're working through this. Now we can go ahead and um, mess with our um, mess with a few other, I shouldn't say mess with, add a few other elements to our map. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a text box. So over off to the side, it's the one with the T in it. And you can kind of draw it and you can move it around later. It uh, may be easier to use the item properties off to the side to ch to type in. I find that personally, or you can type directly into the text box. So for example, I'm just going to, oops, make that title. And um, you can then kind of scroll down. You have the option to kind of change with your change your font and your font size and the colors. You can tell it where within the box you want it to appear. So if I want it centered and oop, that was color, I wanted font. Let's just right now change the size um, to like a 20 for right now, just to kind of play with it and show you how it changes. Now I have my title box. I could move that to like where I would want the title and it does give you kind of those dotted ruler lines to kind of help you find centers and such uh we in maps it is custom to draw a north arrow so if you click on north arrow you can choose your map um you can draw a north arrow change the sizes and as you can see you can go through and you can try changing what it looks like um your options we're just going to leave it as is because right now that's not the most necessary thing that we need uh additionally we have elements like our scale bar scale bars are always important to let people know how they can measure bet um, between our points we have a legend that we can add in and what you will see is Currently, when I just added this, and this is something we will change when we actually start making our real map, remember this is just our practice, it added in all of our, um, our possible colors of points when we don't want all of those. So this was just to kind of get us used to some of the tools that appear in this new window. And Obviously up here is how we can export them. So we can print it, we can export it as an image or as a PDF um, and so on. So if you want to save it, you can. Um, I'm not going to on this one because it was just kind of a practice. That way we see some of our tools. I do encourage you to explore the other tools on here. Uh, if you want, for example, like you can add a shape or add a marker um, to help enhance your map to suit your needs. Okay, so we are back on our map. So we're gonna go ahead and start working on actually creating the map for the Wakiowa Spring State Park. So first thing we need to do is identify which, I'm gonna uncheck these real quick, which of these brown areas is the Wakiowa State Park. So we could go through if you were familiar and check each one zoom into the appropriate spot but what we can do is a much faster route so if we go ahead and again we right click on our florida um, state parks and open up our attribute table <clears throat> excuse me and if you want, go ahead and click like double click site names and it will put it in alphabetical order. And then if you click it again, it will put it in reverse order. So that way it makes it very easy to see where Wakiowa is. Now, when I highlight it, do you see how that brown one now changed to yellow? And so I can zoom in and see where the Wakiowa State Park is. 
Um, additionally, what I could do is I could right click and zoom to feature. Let me move that table out of the way. And it zoomed us in a lot closer to show the entirety of these of the where that state park is. <clears throat> um, you can also use the uh, icon up here with the magnifying glass and the like yellow sticky note um, to zoom into that particular feature. Uh, so what we would like to know is perhaps we want to know is that brown area what state park is that that is right next to it because that's a pretty big list and it would be hard to guess which one it is so in our main window if you come up here and there is a little eye icon with the mouse that's our information identity icon if we click on this brown area a window will pop up and that tells us, oh, this is the Rock Spring State Park Reserve. It gives us the information that would appear in its, um, that appear alongside it in the attribute table. So just that way we can identify what it is and um, right click to turn it off of red, <laughs> just so you know, and exit out of that part. Okay, so now we are in the right section of our um, window or of our area. So I'm going to exit out of our attribute table. Now to unhighlight the yellow, what you simply do is up here, it says um, like diselect features uh, with like two construction papers with the mark out. Now we're back to it not being highlighted. Um, <clears throat> and all of our elements. Okay, so we're zoomed in. I'm going to turn our trails and our points of interest back on to our layer. And if we were to map this area just as shown, it would be kind of blah. It's the, there's not a great contrast between the trails. Um, we don't know what any of these points are that are showing up in the map. We don't know what any of these trails are. So we're going to kind of play with this a little bit and start using the skills of changing the symbology and our category and working with our categories uh, to make sure we have the types of elements we want and to make the map a little more friendly for anyone we would potentially want to show this with. So we have already set our map lines, um, our thickness to like a 0.4. And, <clears throat> uh, but what we can do is let's go to our state parks and go to our symbology layer, sorry, properties. And let's go ahead and categorize them. So again, single symbol categorize and value we want name because that would be the name of the trail. Again, random colors is fine and classify. Um, this, uh, we can again, remove this all other values that generated at the bottom of our list. Um, Now I do I would like to point out to you that if you don't like a particular color, if you double click on it, it will open up a window and you could change that color to be something different. So let's go ahead and click apply. Okay. So now our trails are in different colors. So at least we can distinguish the different trails that are within this park and that we're working with. Um, let's go ahead and kind of change up our symbols for our points of interest. And let's see, now that we have the trails highlighted, we don't exactly need a trail marker for them. So I'm gonna go ahead and deselect these. Oh, about missed those as well. And let's go ahead and add bathhouse canoe and kayak launch. So just kind of letting people know what features are near them. Um, concession, let's do a dump station. 
parking, which is always going to be important. We definitely want to know where parking is. Perhaps we want to know where the picnic areas are for anyone who wants to come out. The ranger station is going to be good for anyone who may need help. Also, as well as restrooms. Let's do a shower station for anyone who might be out there. And let, let's keep trailhead. That way people know where a particular area starts and click apply. Okay, so you should see your sim, um, your points of interest symbols have moved. Now they're kind of more in concentrated areas around our park. Um, and let me open that back up because I forgot I wanted us to change our size of color. So go ahead and click on the area and we can change the size to our symbol. Um, it looks like I'm going to have us change it to a 1.5 millimeter and um, click OK. Awesome. Ap apply. OK, so they're a little bit smaller. They're not going to be super distracting. Let's go ahead and we're going to change our background of our state of our county bound or state park boundaries, excuse me, um, to kind of a a more muted color simply so it's not distracting from the trail heads or the trails. So again, we're going in back into our properties and our symboli symbology layer and go ahead and kind of pick maybe like a color that's not super distracting, perhaps light gray is something I tend to move toward. Apply. Okay, so now we have a real light gray. We can leave the counties as white if we like, or you can. You are welcome to do a very simple gray um, color by clicking on our simple line and changing it to simple fill. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it white for now, but I wanted to point that out. <sighs> Okay, now we have a map that if we were to print this, it wouldn't take up too much color because we have white background with some gray and just a few color points. So that's already a little bit better, as well as the trails are standing out more. But if we were just to hand this to someone, they wouldn't know what park it was or what any of the trails are, or even what county that this uh, park is in. So let's go ahead and we are going to start adding some labels to our map. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and we'll start with the counties layer. That one's very simple. So if you right click on counties, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I need another sip of water. I have a very dry throat today. Properties, and if you click on labels, it says no label. We're gonna use a single label. All right, you now have options about what, how you want your label to appear. You can choose the name uh, or the category in your table that you want. So go ahead and make sure it's set to name uh, and just click OK. So now we can see that Lake County's up here, Seminole's here, and that the park is appearing in Orange County. Um, let's go ahead and repeat that step for our park boundaries as well. So again, going to our properties, label, single label, uh, site name, yes, is what we want, apply. Okay, so we have labeled our Wakiowa Spring and our Rock Spring um, parts. So when you look at your map, it, you notice that our county boundaries are, or counties, sorry, um, labels a little bit bigger. That's the first one we turned on. Our state park boundary or labels are a little bit smaller and they start covering things up. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of move these layers or move these um, symbols around a little bit. That way it makes it a little more clear about what we're trying to do. Um, so let's go ahead and we are going to open our county, 
our Florida County's labels. And let's make that a size eight because that's not the most necessary um, label that we need. So apply, you notice that it's now a little bit smaller. Um, let's. I want to show you guys what a buffer looks like. So if you add a draw buffer, it's gonna draw a little buf buffer around it. Let me do that on the, uh, because I have it on the white background, or you can see it how it's a little bit white around Orange County right there. You can't see it because it's against white right here. Um, but we, I think we should move the labels around a little bit because I don't want Orange County in the middle of the Wakiowa State Park because then people may think it, it's talking about Orange Park. So if we come up here to our symbols and we click the one that has the little arrow, we can then click on Orange County. Now it's saying, okay, what is um, basically asking us like, hey, make sure you know what this is. We say, okay, we know what it is click on it again, and simply move it over to the side. So now we know where our state boundary is. <clears throat> uh, so let's go ahead and change. Oh, to change it from that way, we don't actually move any of our other boundaries. If you come up here and you choose the hand, the hand will now be like how we kind of move from side to side. Go ahead and do state park boundaries. And we are going to play with this one a little bit. So let's go ahead and bold this. So we come up to text, we're gonna bold it. Um, let's go ahead and draw a little buffer around it. So it kind of highlights itself. And we can go ahead and leave it at a 10 for now, right? Now we know that these parks are being labeled. They draw their attention a little bit better. Um, let's go ahead and add some labels to our trails as well. That way we can kind of see what it looks like. So this time we are going to do our single labels. <clears throat> and instead of site name, we want name because it's the name of the trail that we're looking for. And let's go ahead and change the size to about an eight because we want these ones a little smaller um, just because we know that they're going to kind of take up some room. So here we go. Uh, we now have <clears throat> our trails are being labeled. Um, we can see what's going on. Um, if you want to move any of your labels, such as perhaps you don't like where one is sitting, for example, the Shell Mound Road, you can go ahead and click on it. It's just saying identify, and then you can kind of click on it. Perhaps I want it more underneath it, for example. Um, and when you're playing with the labels, something to keep in mind, I'm just opening it back up, is if you kind of click around these, so like placement, you can say like how far away from a line do you want it to be? Do you want it to be above a line, on a line, below a line? Do you want it to run parallel or curved um, with your line, for example? And it will kind of help it will kind of help you identify how you want to move these around. Um, there is no perfect answer. Labels always kind of get a little funny. Um, I will say because sometimes they overcomplicate things or may kind of overshadow something. So what I'm going to do though, is I am going to move my Wakiwa Spring State Park. So it's up a little bit. So we'll move it up. I'm moving it up a little bit, just that way it's a little more seen. And now we kind of have a slightly better view of our map. Um, let's go ahead and see kind of what it would look like on a printout. So go ahead and open up a new printout uh, window and label it the Wakiawa. Oops, it helps when you spell things correctly. Springs State Park. 
I did warn you that my typing wasn't working the best today. And go ahead and draw our map on here. Again, remembering to keep room in our margins. That way we don't accidentally play with our map. So as you can see, it zoomed into the same level that we had our screen set to. So that's something that is very good to keep in mind as you're working with a with a map is if you change the setting the zoom level here it will kind of affect this this map while you're working on it um so let's go ahead and we're going to just put a title on here and let's see what kind of title Oh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead of ourselves. I was going to give you guys a chance to work on that. Um, but go ahead and kind of move the map around a little bit to a position you like it in. So that way I have a little room up here to work with, but perhaps I want to center it just a little more up a touch. That way I don't lose the very bottom edge of it. Um, <clears throat> oh. Sorry, taking taking a breath as I kind of get ahead of myself. Um, you can again remember zooming in and out. So let's go ahead and we're going to add our legend icon. So again, that's over here. It's kind of the three stacked, and I'm going to put it in this bottom corner. Now again, it showed us all of this information um, that we don't necessarily need. So if we on our right side window, scroll down and click only show items in current Atlas feature, or sorry, only show items inside linked map. Um, that's, there we go, changed our legend. So now we have um, all of our picnic or our points of interest are only being shown and it's listing all of our trails because they are different colors. Now we have our trails labeled here so we don't necessarily need that to be listed in our legend. So what we can do is um, uh, sorry I'm just double checking my notes to make sure I'm not messing with anything. Okay, so I can double click, or sorry, expand this. It shows what we're looking at. Um, we want to, um, click on it, click our fonts and text. We can kind of change our font, our font to be slightly smaller for it. Um, I want to play with, um, we can add a second column. So it appears, you know, instead of one big long list, if we wanted. Um, Okay, so I do want us to have it in two columns. And I do want to change. Ah, I see what I have. Okay, when we were classifying our trails, I had us, let me move this out of the way for a minute. I had us classify our trails by the color of I had them classify the colors as the color of the name of the trail. I was mistaken because I was going too fast in my notes. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our trails and we're going to change how we categorize our symbols. So instead of categorizing them by name, we're going to categorize them by use. And then click classify. So it's asking that we want to um, do this and that it will delete these classifications that's okay with me now we have a shorter list of classifications and i'm just going to remove this other values from our list apply okay 
Now, see, we still have, we have our colors, um, but it did change. It looks like, did it change? Let me double check our um, label and make sure it didn't change our label. It shouldn't have, nope, it didn't. Okay, I, I got a little paranoid for a second that I accidentally changed that. So that should change. So now they are all based off of the same use. And legend updates, did you update? Move this. Okay, let me delete that one. Sometimes, sometimes that happens, but we can just delete the feature and redraw our redraw our legend. And again, scrolling down, only show items in linked map. There we go. Now that looks a little bit better. It's a shorter list. It classifies our different trails um, by color. So let's go ahead and we'll make it two columns. Um, split layers. So that way it's it split the layers. That way we get a little bit of a better um, proportion for how this appears. We can kind of change the size as needed. And then this is what when we would also be changing like the size of the font um, to go with it. And the size, um, you can change the size of the symbol um, that goes there. So just because I want to make sure I do not run out of time, I'm going to move on. But simply playing with this, you can create a very nice looking map. All right. Oh, and if you ever need to make sure it does refresh, I forgot, you can use that refresh button and it will refresh what we just did on the bottom. Um, you can draw your scale bars. So something I want you to consider is, you know, playing around with the colors, uh, moving things, moving trail names around, oh, zoom the extent that you want to zoom in and out. What we could do if we wanted is actually, no, I'm not Actually, I am going to do that. If we wanted, for example, we can go to our park boundaries and highlight the uh, the Wakiwa State Park symbol simply by changing our symbology. So if we want, we could categorize it by site name, classify, and what we could do is make the Wakiwa Spring State Park. Let's make that, let's choose that color that we want. You can make it any color. Let's say we want it to be, um, let's see, I don't know, a darker gray. I'm just kind of picking something right now. And then apply. Oh, I forgot. I want to also change our Rock Springs color. Let's make that a light gray. Rock Springs. Let's make that a light gray. So then it would appear kind of like this, um, lighter color, dark color. I should. It should probably be maybe a little reversed. But then over here, if we click our refresh button, it went ahead and changed that color. Now, in our documents um, that I have shared with you guys, I have some tips, you know, to remember about the visual layout. Um, you want balance. You don't want things to be too tiny. And it really takes some time. You just kind of play with it, figure out what works for you. Um, I included, you know, some play examples of something that you might consider. It just depends on what works for you and the purpose of the map you're trying to create. So I just kind of had some fun with it. Um, and I would love for you guys to play with it. You could then, you know, again, like I said, save it, print it, and so on.